You smiling. Why are you smiling? Football's fun. You think football is fun? Yes, no. No? Certain, uh, it was fun. Not anymore, though, is it? Is it? No, not by now. No, no, it's not fun anymore. No. Not even a little bit. Zero fun, sir. All right, listen up. I'm Coach Boone. I'm going to tell you all about how much fun you're going to have this season. Parker? There's something nice about the fact that this is based on a true story about a bunch of kids playing football in a more innocent time for the sport. You will be perfect in every aspect of the game. Get up, boy, get up, get up. They helped this town, the city of Alexandria, to come together. Walt Disney Pictures and producer Jerry Bruckheimer present Denzel Washington and Will Patton in this special behind-the-scenes look at a film from director Boaz Yakin. Everything's not always about winning and losing. I'm going to win. <laughs> Show me, Football is at the core of it, but it's about people. Lose a the game, they'll fire you. Remember the Titans. Well, this is familiar territory to me and a countless number of men. I know firsthand that hard-fought battles were won and lost on football fields all across this country. Whether it was high school, college, or pros, young men gutted out pain, foul weather, losing records, all for love of the game or the glory of victory. I'm Lynn Swan. In 1971, on this very battlefield here in Alexandria, Virginia, a high school football team did more than just play the win. During the course of what became a legendary football season, the Titans of T.C. Williams High discovered more about themselves as young men not just as athletes. And as it turns out, they did more to transform the hearts and minds of an entire city than anyone could have ever imagined. <laughs> Remember the Titans is based on the true story of that amazing football team and the two courageous men who, as their coaches, led them on an extraordinary and inspirational journey. Cause baby, there ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Blue, ain't... shut up. I don't want to see your smile and shuffling here all your missile show singing on this bus. You too. Got that right. A lot of people were bent out of shape. They had to take these three different high schools that were predominantly segregated high schools and combine them into one school. Who are you? I'm Herman Boone. I'm the new assistant coach. Coach Boone's school board made the decision to put you on my staff. I did not hire you. I didn't ask to be assigned to your staff, so I guess we're both in a situation we don't want to be in. The fact of the matter is, you know, Boone was capable. Well, I won a couple of titles down in North Carolina. That's double-A ball. This here's Virginia. We play triple-A. Coach Yost here has been nominated to the Virginia High School Hall of Fame. Fifteen winning seasons. Well, what an opportunity for me, Dad, to learn from the best. In 1971, Alexandria, Virginia was torn by political unrest. The climate was tense because black people lived down in the Berg and uh, the white people lived up on Seminary Ridge. When screenwriter Gregory Allen Howard heard that the Titans football team of 71 help bring the entire city together, he knew he'd found something special. Greg's script came into the office. I read it and said, this is a terrific story. And here we are today actually filming it. Stand by, set, roll sound. Sounds big. The story unfolds as Coach Yost is hit with some disturbing news about his new assistant coach. The school board has decided that Herman Boone is going to be the head coach at TC. It's not fair. My daddy's head coach. He's got a job that he considers the best job in the world and suddenly it all falls apart. Every head coach in the system is white. We had to give him something. To be passing over a great coach, a coach who'd won the city championship, um, added to the strife in the community. I say boycott T.C. Wizard. Coach, he stole your job. I'm not playing for him. Don't do this. Don't make this any harder for me than it already is. Coach, if you go, I go. When his players threaten to sit out the season, Coach Yost decides to stay on as Boone's defensive coordinator. Something needs to happen at this point in this town. And oddly enough, this football becomes a metaphor for, uh, for it happening. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, 
Hey, yo, P-Day, how many yards you think you're gonna get this season, bro? You know, I ain't want to brag, Big Blue, but I figure on at least a uh, thousand. But I ain't want to brag. <laughs> With him going the shots, ain't none of us gonna see nothing but the bench this year. Almost every actor will tell you that playing a real person can be a daunting challenge. Academy Award winner Denzel Washington and veteran actor Will Patton lead a young ensemble cast through what was sometimes grueling physical and emotional terrain. Uh, listen, Coach, with the schools integrating and all, some of the guys are worried about losing their starting positions. Yeah, but you don't worry He's a leader uh, in a lot of ways. People kind of just look to him, and he takes on this responsibility. I'm Julius Campbell, and Julius Campbell is sort of counterpart to Bertier. They just didn't like each other. So whether or not they respected each other's talent or not, would go unseen. Kip Pardue plays Ronnie Sunshine Bass. Hey, fellas! Look at that fruit cake! I know that I'm a good football player. I'm kind of being shopped around, being recruited to play on the best team. Also featured among the Titan players are Donald Faison and Ethan Supley. I want you to tell me something about one of your black teammates. Sir, I eat lunch with Rev. So what kind of music does the Rev like? Oh, me and Rev both dig on the Temptations. Oh, yeah? I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. Ain't too proud to beg. OK, all right. <laughs> Stop begging. Anybody else? Camel? Bertier? It was definitely a feat on Herman Boone's part to get them to feel like they were part of the same team. Good morning, good morning, good morning, coaches. How are you? Initially, there was total mistrust as players wondered who would get starting positions following Coach Boone's demanding football camp held in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. How can I help you boys? I'm Gary Bertier, the only All-American you got on this team. At that point in the uh, early 70s, he arguably was the greatest player in the history of Virginia high school football. You want any of us to play for you, you reserve half the open positions for him and players. Half the offense, half the special teams. We don't need any of your people on defense. We're already set. What you say your name was uh, Jerry? Gary. No, you must have said Jerry, like Lewis, which would make you Dean Martin, right? Coach Boone came into this very volatile situation right like now. a bull in a china shop. Listen up, I don't care if you're black, green, blue, white, or orange. I want all of my defensive players on this side, all of my offensive players on this side. Move, right now. You and you, offensive bus, sit together. You and you, defensive bus, sit together. Get comfortable, too, because the person that I have you sitting next to is the same one that you'll be rooming with for the duration of this camp. To help the cast prepare for their roles, director Boaz Yakin insisted they attend football camp much like any real player would. We came here two weeks before shooting solely with the intent of playing football. We had to go out there and some cats had never touched a football, literally. The two weeks they spent together in football camp really brought, brought our guys together. Drastically hard physical labor and hitting each other all day, you know, I mean, it, it'll, it'll bring you closer together. They really tried to kill us. Oh, oh, Football camp sucked. It was terrible. Oh, no. it was just a lot of throwing your body on the ground oh, and running. Oh, just weird, horrible torture things like that. During the football camp, the real Titans of TC came together as a team, much like the actors did. But real life bonding was a far more gut-wrenching experience. Wake up, gentlemen. It's late. It's 3 a.m. in the morning. We're going to take a little run through the woods. Many questions. Coach, it's a high school football team. We're not the Marines here. Let's go. I think when you take a group and you separate them and give them a purpose and understand it's about winning, I think that they will respond, especially young people. Anybody know what this place is? This is where they fought the Battle of Gettysburg. 50,000 men died right here on this field. 
fighting the same fight that we're still fighting amongst ourselves. That was a key moment for Yost to suddenly be there amongst those graves at, at Gettysburg. And I think he begins to realize Boone's behaving with a, an honor and a dignity that's kind of surprising, and he's getting something done. What was that, Ray? Whatever it is, it ain't blocking. Give me a break. You want to break? I'll give you a break. Me and Julius. Wait a minute. Just let, let them in. Get to rev once, just one time. I swear to God, I'm going to hit you so hard by the time you come to. Ooh, boy, you're going to need a new haircut. You understand me? <clears throat> Let's play, fellas. Run the ball. Let's run it again. For most athletes, participating in sports at an early age is the starting point of a lifelong passion for competition. During these early years of physical challenge, they learn some of life's most valuable lessons, and it is often the guidance from their coaches and teammates that prepares them for a world beyond sports. Coaches from high school all the way through the pros inspired and motivated me to do my best. Without them, I may not have had the confidence to succeed, much like the real Titans did. Get up! Get out of here! Go run! Go! Jump on that ball like a starved man on a Christmas hand! Coach Boone and Coach Yost were fiercely competitive and shared a genuine concern for the team. That's Bertier. Right. That's Petey. Until I came out of service, I wanted to be a minister. And I got looking around, I thought, gee, you know, if I'm in church, if I'm a preacher, I can only reach the kids that come to me at church. And I knew how much I looked up to my coaches. And I thought, well, maybe I can do that. So I wanted to be a coach because I get a chance to work with kids like that. This kid here is a poor ghetto project kid. Right. Brilliant. Right. Well, but we can't use him, coach. We yeah. can't help him. Right. <laughs> so they came, but you remember? They yeah. came back and said, come on, man. I said, no, you cannot have Earl unless you take this boy here. Right. I don't care what kind of money you give him, what kind of scholarship yeah. you give him, you are going to take this kid here. You know who this kid is today? He's almost director of Pfizer Pharmaceutical Company. No kidding. Steve Giles went to Princeton. Um, let's see, the, the center ended up going to Michigan, and he was a concert level uh, cellist. Uh, Dan Carl and uh, Jerry Buck went to the Naval Academy, and then I went to West Point. All of these kids are highly professional. They're just super. The filmmakers of Remember the Titans were inspired not only by this unique story, but also by the extraordinary men who lived it. How Coach Boone and Coach Yost managed to pull such a disparate group of teenagers together is incredible, especially considering the fact that these men had completely different approaches to the game. Coach Boone is about you do it till you get it right. There's a fine line between tough and crazy and you're flirting with it. Yost is, is a little more laid back. That's good, Gary. I can see you've been working. Thanks a lot, Coach. He and Coach Yost, I think, fundamentally are teachers, but their their style was was uh, was a bit different. Hey, get over here. What are you doing, son? You missed a block by a mile. You didn't even have the football to fumble this time. There's no excuse. No excuse. Boy, get over there on the bench. Coach Boone was more of a hard-nosed, hands-on type guy. He wanted everything to perfection. Herb, take over for him. Coach Yost, on the other hand, was willing to sit down and talk with the guys, uh, try to really explain to them how to bring the best out in them. You come play linebacker for me. I think many of those kids were better off because of uh, our two philosophies. I had the honor of sitting down with the real Coach Boone and Coach Yost to ask them about that unique period in their lives on which the film is based. <laughs> you funny, you know that. <laughs> and Bill, I want to ask you directly. When, in 1971, uh, you found out that you were going to be replaced as a head coach, did you see this coming, or was it a total surprise to you? Uh, it was a total surprise, man. First, I was hurt, disappointed and hurt. Then I got angry, but I didn't know who to get angry with, you know. So, Herman, when you came in, did you realize how much of a shock this change was for Bill? No, because I had no idea what was going on. Did you feel like, under those circumstances, maybe you wouldn't take the job, or but once they offered you the head coaching job, you decided, okay, let's no, go? No, I, I, I first turned it down, because here I was accepting a job 
based on the color of my skin when I, when I was just refused one based on the color of my skin. And I'm just not that type of person. And of course, a lot of my good friends now in the community came to my home and uh, convinced me to carry the banner. I finally agreed to carry the banner. And uh, so look at old Duke now. Has there been a better example in all the years you've been involved in coaching of sports being the great common denominator? I don't think so. I mean, uh, it was happening and we weren't even aware of it. The students didn't want to mix. Uh, most of the teachers were against it. I think even the administrators were against it. I think they threw it on us and said, make it work. Who are the players that emerged as the early leaders that helped bring this team together? I think it was uh, Julius Campbell and Gary Bertier, and that's well, brought out in the movie. And when they got to where they could crack on each other, that's when I'd sit back and smile and say, hey, they're getting there. Little elastic, man. What, what happened to you? Man, I just gave your mama a piggyback ride, and she weighs twice as much as I <laughs> When you're on this football field, and you stand in certain places, do you remember moments? Do you remember experiences? Oh, I'll go last scrimmages. Mm -hmm. uh, These are practices. Yeah, we're not talking about I, games. They were tough right here. Our goal line scrimmages right here were tough. I mean, we had the number one defensive team in the area, the number one offensive team in the area. That's one of the few times I would see him upset uh, when a touchdown was run on the defense. And of course, I would get tremendously upset if one were not. It's a move. That's, so that's, don't get excited. They don't want no time and build. They wanted three quarter speed. I know, but we really had some of the biggest fights right here on this field. Well, wait I a mean. minute, Herman. Did you ever score on us? Yeah, we scored on you. What do you mean? Did I ever score on you? What are you talking about? It's the only time I've ever seen you angry. You know, yeah, you're that's, not supposed. That's when you tell us now you don't move, you stay right here. No, 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 no. Herman, it's a shame that there's no competition between the two of you. <laughs> you clearly, you you clearly enjoyed this experience as you look back at what you accomplished. Is there a great sense of pride that what you did as coaches had such a positive impact on this city? I'd like to think so. At the time, we didn't realize it, but looking back, yeah, I would like to think that we made a difference. I'd like to think that we played a role in calming the situation down to the extent that people, instead of fighting each other, began talking to each other. And for that particular reason, I feel that I played a role in that. I think we planted the seed. We didn't know it at the time, but I think we planted the seed. And then it took a lot of work after that by a lot of different people, not just Herman and I, to follow up. But we sort of started it. And that makes you feel good. We were first. For one special night, the filmmakers brought together the real titans of TC to meet their on-screen counterparts. It was the first time some players had seen each other in nearly 30 years. I remember a bunch of young men with different backgrounds coming together and uh, working very hard to achieve a goal winning the state championship. <laughs> special guy, man. It's odd how we look alike, isn't it? That was a great night for them. I mean, about 50 or 40 of the guys came down and there was still as much love here 30 years later, you know, between them and for their coaches. Oh, boy, this is better than the movie. Let's go, let's go. Listen up. Greek mythology, the Titans were greater even than the gods. They ruled their universe with absolute power. Well, that football field out there tonight, that's our universe. Let's rule it like Titans. The movie is about the kids. We move with them and root for them because of the journey they take. We are the Tigers. We are the Tigers. I like Tigers. At heart, it's a sports film about the ability of sports to make a difference in people's lives. Well, I'll be John Brown. Hopefully there's something in it that can make us think about right now. Let me tell you something, you don't let nothing 
come between us. The film shows that if you give them a chance to share things together and do things together, live together, people can become almost a family. Out of all of the stories in this world that possibly could have been told, you guys picked this particular one. It is a fantastic story. Racial tensions have improved since 1971, but inspirational stories like Remember the Titans show us how we can continue to evolve as a society, embracing the opportunities to reach out and accept change. Much like the city of Alexandria, Virginia did just 30 years ago. I'm Lynn Swan, thanks for joining me.